All right, I'm going to make this quick so we can get started with the uh, with the actual task. Uh, Matthias from Sweden sent in a tip to make a heat sink uh, fixture for doing outside corner joints on stainless steel and steels. It's a very common uh, joint, an outside corner joint for building boxes and tanks. So, so this is a very useful tool to have around, especially if you're making it out of stainless. It'll draw the heat out. It'll make the the, the box warp less. Um, it'll get better shielding. It'll look better. It's worth the, worth the trouble. So I got a hold of some copper bar stock, some scrap stuff. It's got a couple of holes in it. I didn't really want that, but that ain't going to hurt anything. So uh, we're going to weld it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave a very small gap. So this thing, when it's placed on a, a tank or an outside corner joint to weld it, there's only going to be about an eighth of an inch from the bar to the edge of the bead because I really want it to draw out as much heat as possible. I didn't see any, any uh, reason to put it out much further. And uh, so that's going to trap argon gas in that little trough, and, and uh, we're going to we're going to try it out when we get done. I'm going to weld these. I'm going to bridge these corners with aluminum bronze, just with weld metal, and put like a an overlay of beads on there uh, for something to hold it. Because I don't have any extra copper to bend the straps to hold this stuff together, and because that's just a down and dirty way to do it, I'll just bridge it up. I'll just use weld metal. So let's do it. Now for those of you that didn't see the video, uh, the first one with the tips from Matthias, one was a way to fit up uh, stainless steel tubing for marine rails, for boat rails, and he's used a split sleeve on the inside and a little homemade clamp on the outside with hose clamps, and it was a good tip for fitting up steel. And he also talked about the outside corner joint uh, made out of copper fixture heat sink that he uses for ma making tanks, and that's what we're talking about today. And uh, it's for doing any kind of stainless steel tank, any kind of sheet metal tank, and drawing that heat out is going to just give you a little bit of an edge. It's going to warp less, just goes better. So I got some quarter inch copper bar stock. I'm going to weld it with aluminum bronze. Like I said, it's got some holes that were drilled in it. I just put them away from the weld. Not going to hurt a thing. I want to clamp this thing down tight to a piece of angle iron to get as close to a flat 90 degree uh, surface as I can so that it touches uh, the joint wherever it, you know, as close to the weld and draws out as much heat as possible. So again, I'm using aluminum bronze filler and I'm using straight helium, 100% helium here because I know copper takes a lot of heat. Does it? It's got a melting point of about 1900 and something degrees Fahrenheit and this aluminum bronze melts a whole lot less, maybe uh, 1300 and uh, so that's why that rod is balling up sometimes. But it takes a lot of heat to melt copper and I knew that uh, since I had a tank of helium there, I figured I'd just swap over to straight helium and you see that funky looking green haze around the, that stuff in the wire and stuff with that hot helium arc kind of boiling out some stuff and you get that a lot when you use straight helium so I bridge the gap on these two uh, pieces of uh, copper yes it looks like Fido's but I'm not really worried about that I just want to get a uh, good something to hold it and I didn't have any copper blocks or any copper scrap to bridge it with so I, I got no choice but to use some weld metal once I get the uh, gap bridged, come back with a little reinforcement. And, uh, you know, you can see the tip of that rod balling up. This is 1 16th aluminum bronze that I'm feeding in there. And uh, whenever, you, whenever you use a rod that's too small and you're using a lot of heat, it's going to ball up like that. Especially happens on aluminum. So that's a tip for you right there. Now, I, I got the two welded up. I ground them off for a good reason, and that reason was wasn't because they looked good. That's for dang sure. I don't want to have to explain uh, an ugly weld to everybody from here on out. So uh, you know, I just hit them with a little sander, and uh, nobody knows they're, they're going to serve the purpose. All right, so I got a couple of pieces of uh, 300 series stainless sheet metal laying around, 50 to 60 thousandths thick. You know, 1.2 millimeters for those of you that are on that system, roughly. And uh, you remember we talked about, you know, when you're tacking a joint like this, just fusion tacking stainless steel, you can set the machine roughly twice as hot as what you think you're going to need, what you would weld with. You touch off with that uh, tungsten and then rock back and then just bump that pedal real quick and give it a little blast of amperage. And it usually will drive those things together so quick it, it's almost like a, a laser and uh, it, uh, it won't heat up and warp and blow a hole and... Uh, all that kind of stuff. So again, I just I just rock the cup in, touch the tip off, rock it back. Even if I'm not even looking, I can do it. And I hit it real quick with the uh, with the foot pedal, and boom, I got a nice clean small tack. Now I'm using the Everlast Power TIG 250EX. I don't know if you noticed this, but look, watch I just light up on that corner. Even lighting up on the very corner of 50 thousandths is not 
any trouble at all. I'm even using 332nd electrode here. I would normally use a 1 16th for something this thick, but it's got a really good start on it. So for welding, welding an outside corner joint, this one does have the copper fixture on it, the copper heat sink. It's drawing the heat out, just like this. Sliding my hand along, dipping about once every eighth of an inch or maybe a little bit less than that, but at least once I'm dipping once a second, moving the torch somewhere between a sixteenth of an eighth, trying to move it the same each time. And that's pretty much uh, one way of welding a joint like this. Now for the second half, I took the fixture off, just going to weld it. I'm, it is laying on the uh, aluminum uh, angle iron. That's going to that's gonna take some heat out of it, but um, the copper fixture is not on it. I try to weld it the same way using the same heat, actually a little bit less heat because I didn't have the, the uh, copper heat sink drawing the heat out of it, but try to get the same size bead in other words. And uh, you can see at the end with that thing getting red hot, there's already a difference. You can tell even from this angle that there's a big difference in how much heat, how much discoloration and all that kind of stuff. So let's watch this one more time. Again, about once, dip, dip the rod about once a second. I am using a number five cup here because I, uh, I figured if this thing will pull the heat out and, and not discolor with a small number five TIG cup, not a gas lens or anything, it would uh, it would really show the results. Now watch this again. This is another little tip. Keep the rod in the puddle a little bit longer when you end a joint like this and it'll keep you from blowing a hole in it. So here's the final result. That's with the fixture, with the heat sink. Pulled the heat sink off and that's what I got. So. You know, a lot of things that we do in welding aren't like night and day. This kind of is night and day here. It's a huge difference. Uh, well worth the trouble it took to scrounge up the copper and make it. And uh, so, you know, thanks, Matthias. Again, you did me a solid and uh, got me out of a jam that one week. And uh, so I'm getting some more mileage out of it this time. Thanks a lot. Thanks. For so here is a shot of the number five TIG cup. And uh, number five TIG cup's pretty small. It's five sixteenths. It doesn't do a real good job of shielding stainless steel like this unless you run really, really low heat. And uh, so there's the with the fixture and, a and after. What's this? This is a belt buckle. I thought this was pretty cool. We talked about using aluminum bronze filler on copper. Well, I played around with some stainless steel sheet metal and uh, built up this little skull belt buckle using aluminum bronze on AC and, with, and a big cup. So if you get bored, there's a project for you. Now, what video would be complete without a shameless plug for t-shirts? At the bottom of the YouTube video here, if you're on YouTube, there's a link to take you to my uh, web page, and then you can see a link to go and, and check out the t-shirts. If you don't want one, that's cool. Just hang around and enjoy the content, and good luck with your welding.